Ram Elisvarupu, the head of India Equity at BNP Paribas India on the show now. Abhiram, thank you very much for joining in. Just earlier today, we were having a chat with uh, Sunil Tirumalai of UBS and he was telling us the earnings downgrade is only going to accelerate from here on and FY24 may end up seeing an EPS growth of only 10 to 11 percent, which is lower than what consensus expectation is, closer to 15 percent. Where do you stand on the camp of earnings growth from here on? I'm, I'm not... Uh... <clears throat> Fully disagreeing with that comment, actually, because if you take the history of our um, earnings forecast over the last, let's say, 10 years or so, every year we have started out with a high estimate and then kept cutting them. I think last year was probably one of the few years where the cuts weren't that much. Uh, if you see on the ground feedback from uh, both uh, on the consumer side as well as from corporates, it's turned quite, um, let's say, measured over the past month or so. Um, and there are signs that uh, the rural economy is also not going to pick up looking at the monsoon situation. But also, over the past one year or so, we saw urban doing quite well, but that is starting to reverse a little bit. So expecting some kind of an earnings cut from here on is, is not entirely ruled out. Over the past three to six months or so, we've seen maybe about 4 to 5 percent earnings cuts. Four to five percent earnings cuts from here on. I guess that's the reality that the market is in the process of uh, pricing in. Abhiram, hi, good afternoon. So tell us, I mean, if we're going to be in this kind of a challenging market, then where would you place your bets? Just in terms of the strategy, the top sectors, or the themes to back and stuff to stay away from. Uh, let's step, step back a little bit on this. I think you just take the last three months or so, maybe four months. We've seen valuations correct to the point where they're not very far away from, let's say, five-year averages. Uh, earnings, as I mentioned to you, uh, be cut to some extent. Uh, but conversations with investors seem to suggest that everyone's in a somewhat of a wait-and-watch mode, waiting for the next catalyst. Now, if we are looking at on the margin earnings being downgraded and not upgraded, so chances are that the market outlook in the near term, at least, is quite lackluster. If you take, however, a 12-month view, then uh, we see high single-digit returns from here, maybe low double-digit returns over the next one year or so. But my sense is that conversations are getting increasingly stock-specific. Uh, in terms of sectors, I think there are opportunities across sectors, at least on a relative basis. So um, banks for us seems to be the, uh, the biggest overweight position, uh, especially uh, private sector banks. Uh, then we are a lot more selective if you move down. Uh, we still like some parts of IT, uh, in, in the healthcare space, we like uh, hospitals and some uh, specialty um, uh, companies. Uh, and a little bit more going down, I think the, the space where we're not very particularly enthused is actually the consumer space, where we think that a time correction is on its way and that could continue for the rest of the year. Hmm. Abhiram, uh, uh, is, uh, what's, what's the global uh, team uh, at, at uh, BNP really telling you? Uh, uh, which way are flows headed? Someone, somebody yesterday was making the point that when you know the enthusiasm on China fades, uh, money will start coming here. The selling perhaps uh, stops a little bit. Uh, where are we on that? I mean, just some indication because this is a broad-based risk-off move. Go on. Yeah, I think the last time I was here, I was talking about a potential switch away from uh, India to China. Uh, that's a theme that uh, you know pretty much everyone's been running with over the last six months or so. And that's played out to a large extent. I think uh, the, the performance of China over India is what, close to 50% or so since uh, end of October. Uh, now, that said, if you kind of create a bull case for China versus India, it's still possible to justify a, a higher upside for China than India. So I suspect while that trade is uh, has played out to a large extent, it is not entirely over. So I think at least the next three months or so, you may see that happen. At the moment, investors outside of India at least are waiting and watching uh, data from China to, to kind of back the view that China is starting to open up and the numbers there are going to start to improve. Now, in the bigger picture, which is if you include the US here as well, uh, we think that there'll be a couple more 25 bit uh, rate hikes in the US. But overall, I think the market may be getting a little complacent about rate cuts in the second half, which which some quarters of the market are expecting. If you see data coming out of the U.S., it's it's really strong, especially around employment, consumer data, et cetera. Even services data was pretty good, which suggests that chances of cutting rates in the second half of the year may be, may be low, and, and those expectations may be somewhat misplaced. So overall, from an equities perspective, we are a lot more sober on, on, on developed market, equities 
uh, within in, within the regional uh, portfolio, we are neutral India, and we're still positive on China. As I mentioned to you, the, the chances of a little more upside or an outperformance of China over India is, 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 is possible. Okay, all right, Aviram, thanks so much for stopping by and, in fact, giving us a view on the markets. But, uh, you know, the markets have been moving around. We're getting into the weekly expiry for the Nifty Financial Services Index as well. So